Hello everyone and welcome back to the Golang tutorial. So in this video we're going to be talking about interfaces. Now interfaces are very important and very powerful inside of Golang and in fact inside of any real typed language. If you're coming from a more dynamic language like JavaScript or Python, you've probably never heard of an interface. And in fact, you don't really need to use one in those languages. I mean, I suppose you could, but there's not really a real good purpose for it. Whereas in a language like Golang, it makes a lot of sense. Now, what is an interface? Well, an interface is really a way of looking at a set of related objects or types. So let's have a look at this example here to really explain this. We have a circle and we have a rectangle and they both have this similar behavior in that we can call area on them. I can call a rect area, I can call a circle area and they both have a different implementation, but they both have an area. So in theory, you know, the rectangle and the circle could be looked at in the lens of they both have an area. They're both of shape. They both have some kind of area. I don't need to know anything more about them other than that they have this area and well, I should be able to use that area on them. That's kind of what I'm getting at with the interface. The interface lets you look at these types as if they're the same. It kind of hides the details underneath and says, we just care about the fact that these both have area or they both have a perimeter or they both have something, right? That's what an interface lets us do. It lets us define some kind of behavior that is similar between objects or similar between types so that we can use these types kind of one in the same with their related behavior. Now, a good example of this is if we wanted to make a slice, for example, of C1 and R1. So maybe I want to do this. I want to say shapes colon equals, and I want to make a slice. We want it to be some type. I don't know what the type is, so I'm just going to write type for now. And then we want C1, R1. Now, of course, we don't know what to put here. And this is going to be an error, right? We need to put some kind of type when we define this slice. But what type do we put here? We have no idea, right? Now, what I want to do, though, is I want to look through shapes and I want to call area on both of the shapes. I want to be able to do something like shapes zero dot area and shapes one dot area. And in fact, if we look, we assume that this is valid. It's not, but assume it's valid. Then really, this should work, right? Because both the circle and the rectangle have this area method. So I should be able to do shapes zero dot area and shapes one dot area. And that means that maybe if I had a huge uh, slice of shapes, I could do a for loop and loop through them and call dot area on all of the shapes and sum up the area, right? Or something like that. But right now we can't do that. And this is where an interface comes in. It lets us do exactly the behavior I'm trying to illustrate to you. So I'm just going to define an interface and then we'll talk about it more in depth. So I'm going to define type shape interface like that. And inside of here, I'm going to say area float 64. Oh, not inside the bracket. Put it there. All right. So what I've done now is I've defined a shape interface and all this says all the whole point of this interface is really just to say that anything, any type, any struct that has this area method that returns float 64 is of type shape. It is, it implements the interface shape. So we say that when some kind of struct, so one of these types that we've defined has the behavior defined or has the field defined inside of this interface, that it implements the interface. And when it implements the interface, we can use the interface as kind of like an upper level type of this struct. Now, I know this is a lot of big words. It's confusing. We'll see how this makes sense in a second. But really just think of the fact that since both circle and rectangle have an area method here, they implement this this interface, right? Because all that's said here is if it has area that returns float 64, it is a type shape. That's what this interface says. Now, if I go ahead in here and I add, um, I don't know, let's just call pow. I'm just making up a random one here. And we say pow float 64. Well, now both circle and rectangle do not implement the shape interface because they don't have a method called pow that returns float 64. That's the basics. That's all you really need to know. Of course, if we had a method that took some parameters, then I would have to define them in here. I'd have to say something like x int. And now we would need to have not only a method called pow that returned float 64, but a method called pow that took a value x that was an integer and returned float 64. So that is kind of how the interface works. Now, once we have kind of understand how you implement an interface and really how you define it, which I think I've just explained pretty much, how do we use it? Well, we use it just like any other type. In fact, I can actually just plug it right in here and save. And this is totally fine. What does it say here? Shapes declared and not used. Yeah, so that's a common error. That's not to do with what I've done. 
But see, this is how this works. Since the circle and the rectangle both implement the shape interface, I can use the type shape and plug them both inside of this slice. Now, the important thing to understand, though, is that as soon as I do this, as soon as I use an interface as a type, all of the other behavior that I know is true about circle and rectangle, I cannot access through this interface. So I can only use the dot area method on anything inside of shapes because that's all that this knows that I know, right? If you think about it, the only thing similar between the rectangle and the circle is the fact that they have area. So since that's defined inside of the shape, I can only use dot area when I'm looking at shapes. On C1, I can use anything. I can call the radius. On R1, I can look at the width and the height. But on this shapes list right here, this shapes um, slice, I can only use dot area. So let me show you what I mean. If I do four underscore shape colon equals range shapes, oops, like that. Let's go shapes. Then what I can do is go something like FMT dot print, not print F. I wanted to print line. These auto completions always mess me up. All right, print line. And then let's go shape dot area. This is valid and I can do this, but I could not, for example, call shape dot radius, right? And the reason I can't do that is because of course, radius is not defined in the type shape. So I can only use things that are defined in the interface when I'm accessing the interface, which of course makes sense. So let's have a look at this now. I'm just going to run this down here. So go run tutorial.go and we get the area printing out. So we have 63 point whatever and 35. And that is the basics of the interface. If you implement the interface, then you can use the objects inside of here, inside of the type interface and use all of the behavior that's defined in the interface. It's just a way of looking at objects that implement this type of behavior. We look at them in this lens, not in the circle lens, which would give us access to the radius as well. Right. And that is the basics behind this. Uh, I don't know what else can we show you? Let's look at a function. So another great thing with uh, interfaces is that you can use them as any kind of type. It doesn't just have to be a slice. You can use them now as parameter types, right? As return types. You can use them as a variable type, whatever you want. You can use them in a map, right? It, that's why they become so flexible because now you can use all of these different types under this interface, right? So now let's do func get area and let's inside of here actually say we're going to take S, which is a shape. And then we're going to return a float 64 and all we'll do is return the S dot area. So this is very similar to what we've done down here. All we're saying is that now we're going to have this function called get area instead of printing shape dot get area. Let's just print the get area of shape. So now I just pass that shape here, which could be a circle or it could be a rectangle. In fact, it could be anything that just has an area method on it. And then I return S dot area. Boom, we can print that out and this works totally fine. Again, one of the great things with an interface is that we can do that. Now, I just want to show you what happens if I make these methods uh, actually accept the pointer. So, of course, I showed you in the previous videos that pointers and uh, what is it? Pointers and values are different and that we need to understand the difference between them. So I need to kind of go over that here. If we add this method so it accepts a pointer, not just the actual instance or not just the uh, kind of like a copy, like we've said before, then if I save this, we're going to have to change some things. So here, look what we're getting. Cannot use C1 type circle as type shape in array or slice literal. Circle does not implement shape uh, area method has pointer receiver. So what this is saying is that I cannot use these so c1 and r1 which again it's just the it's not the pointer it's kind of like the value right i cannot use that inside of here because how am i going to call area on not a pointer of circle right how am i going to do that well i can't so what i need to do when that's the case is i need to make sure that when i create a slice or i use these um, as a shape i'm actually passing the pointer so now we're totally fine. This works. We can do that. But that's because, again, we had the asterisks here. So if we remove the asterisks, and in fact, I can do this now, if I just remove it from circle and we save here, let's see what we're getting. Save. Is it not giving me any error? Oh, yeah, I guess I can pass the pointer. Well, now I cannot pass the pointer for C1 and this still works. But if I try to not pass the pointer for R1 and we save, we should get the red squiggly. Yeah, we get the red squiggly popping up. So 
it's good practice to always pass the pointer when you're making kind of slices and stuff like this, just so that if you need access to the pointer, you have it and it doesn't hurt to pass the pointer because uh, you can still access the methods even if the pointer is there. But if you have a method that has the pointer on it, then you need to make sure you pass the pointer. Otherwise, it won't implement the interface correctly. So I hope that kind of makes sense. I understand that's probably a little bit confusing and you need to do some more practice to really understand that. But just when you see examples or you see error messages that are telling you like, oh, it has reference, it doesn't have pointer, stuff like that, mess around with the ampersand and the asterisk because that's probably your error. And one of the most common errors I run into all the time writing Go code is the fact that I'm mismatching pointers and types or pointers and references and values and all of that stuff. So that is kind of it for interfaces. The last thing I will say is that objects can implement different interfaces. So you don't only have to have one interface. They can actually implement three, four, five, as many interfaces as you want. And in fact, I can actually go type shape two interface and then here go area float 64. And now technically both my circle and my rectangle implement the shape interface and the shape two interface, right? And now shape two is just a different name to look at my objects. And in fact, it's going to be the same view, but I could have made this a different method, right? So if I made this now perim, so maybe that's perimeter, then if I wanted these two objects to implement this interface and this interface, I would need to make sure that I add perimeter uh, to a circle and to rect. So add methods for a perimeter and then they would implement both of those. So I hope that makes sense. Again, that has been interfaces. That's really all I can show you. There's not too much more to go through, but I would encourage you guys to kind of look them up, practice with them a little bit because they are very important and they're really useful to understand that this is kind of the way we view these structs and that when we're viewing them in this way, we can only access or perform any of the behavior that's defined in this kind of view. That's the way I like to think about it. Again, hopefully that makes sense. Let me know in the comments down below. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in another YouTube video.